Hey, Sims. <clears throat> I had to re-record the, the interview, so here goes. What is the market? The market is uh, companies that want to make a breakthrough. Uh, typically, a very successful company where they've hit a wall and sales have stopped growing because what used to work does not work anymore. And in fact, if the company had a business develop, development machine, it has atrophied. How do I market myself? Well, it used to be that historically, I went after uh, prospects. I try to network the way I think most consultants do. Starting about seven, eight years ago, I started putting a marketing machine in place building websites, several of them, and they're doing a lot of uh, videos, one minute, two minute, three minute videos, among other things. And it wasn't until the last two, three years where it really started paying off. So I, I did the marketing for many years, but finally I started adding to the marketing, reaching out kind of like in a, um, you know, a mass way doing mass mailings and the whole thing came together and we're getting quite a few leads turned to customers that way. Um, you, you know, you quote this woman, Judy Lutze, who says you simply have to care more about meeting your client's needs than you care about what you get out of it. My take on that is, you know, first do no harm and then second, what I offer to anyone who will give me a first meeting is that it will be well worth it and that they will be glad they took the meeting. Can salespeople establish instant trust? If so, how? Obviously hard to do, um, but I've had quite a few one call closes. And so I, I think part of it is the, the prospect comes to the meeting really looking for a solution. And then what, what we bring to it is um, domain competence. We really know the space and we know their problems even before they bring them up. And then we show them a solution that's credible. And then finally, there's a track record. I think video testimonials help in this regard. Why are salespeople heroes? It, it's, it's counterintuitive in that our our culture has been infected with negative stereotypes like Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. Uh, Willie Loman, an anti-hero, is a slimy uh, uh, loser who cheats and commits suicide at the end. And that's a dominant image of, of salespeople. And this is so sad because many, uh, many buyers have absorbed this image. In fact, many salespeople have, which just stops them from doing necessary behavior. The essential reason why salespeople are heroes is because they help open the closed mind, which is what moves civilization forward. So the, the defining point for the hero is when the prospect gives you access and says, I'm good. So you fight to the point where you get access and I'm good, and then you continue the conversation. Not necessarily a one call open, but you persist to the point where you open the prospect's mind. Uh, the underlying metaphor is, we bring the prospect to a higher peak of well-being. The prospect's looking down and we get the prospect to look up. What is the path of growth? Well, the ideal, the ideal scenario is where um, there's, there's a phenomenon taking place in the economy that puts you in the path of growth, whatever you're doing. So either there's an untapped opportunity or there's a major, major problem and what we do is right in that place so that, you know, rising water raises all boats. Um, earning the right to the second sales call with the inescapable idea. So the second hardest thing besides getting the first sales call is getting to the second sales call. And what you need to do in the, in the second sales call is build out the elements of the inescapable idea. So you have to bring the conversation to the point where the prospect will share a major problem or a hot button issue. Sometimes we have to name some of those issues so that the prospect says, okay, we get it. You know, they'll, they'll share some. Once they share something that's got meat in it, uh, we, have to, 
we have to respond with bold vision and proving to show we have a solution for that problem. We then have to validate the connection by getting some feedback. And ideally, we have built a defendable position into it. So what would be an example of a defendable position? A low cost provider might be a defendable position. Um, to a large extent, Microsoft's operating system is a defendable position. Um, if you want an Apple phone, you get it from Apple. iPhone, you get it from Apple. So it's ideal that a salesperson has thought all this through, or the company has thought all this through uh, before you're in a conversation. In a downturn, provoke your customer. Well, one of the default ideas is that, you know, you want to get people to like you, which is true. It's a good thing for people to like you, but it sets up a false alternative or what they call in um, built to last the tyranny of the ore, which is social selling or business selling. So a social seller wants people to like them and that's the dominant motivation. A business seller wants to earn the right, the profitable business, and that usually involves provoking your customer. Um, in fact, that's the name of a Harvard Business Review article, I believe March 2010, in a downturn, provoke your customer. Now, why do you provoke your customer? You provoke the customer to show them a higher, a higher level of well-being. That, that false, you wanna show them they're, on, their, they're a false, on a false peak. Now, a social seller won't do that. A social seller is concerned you won't like me. But in the process of being concerned about that, the social seller just, you know, never really gets serious access. So there, there, are, there are two kinds of, of um, uh, conversations, safe and serious. In a safe conversation, you're never going to get a stick of business. The prospects in that conversation, for a different reason than you are, typically, um, for a third or fourth or 20th price could be a free education. In, in the, in the pre-COVID-19 days, it could have been uh, to get a free lunch. So it's not social or business, it's a mix of both. So it's don't, no tyranny of the or, it's an and, as is articulated in uh, Built to Last. Um, my view is if you don't lead with a business relationship, you wind up with a social relationship, which often leads to no business or unprofitable business. Because, you know, what's one of the best ways to make a, get a, so, a, a buyer to like you is, uh, as a social seller is to cut your price. So what you very often find is that social sellers can be recognized by their own unprofitable book of business if they have um, any business at all. Um, so how do you start a business relationship? You look for common ground that could include things like core value alignment. Core value alignment is something that you could determine by looking at most, most websites. Um, what is catas catalyzing sales innovation and do or die? So if you wanna build your business and you're not, you know, you're not in a scenario like we're shooting fish in a barrel, if you have to get out there and push um, and there's opposition, there's entrenched opposition, and you're facing I'm good. You need two things. You need innovation and do or die. So innovation is new ideas, new approaches, and some of them could um, violate social mores. I'll give you a couple of examples. For instance, um, you might be talking to a buyer or a decision maker who's not the top decision maker. Let's say you've been even selling this, this company some, some amount of business, maybe five ten thousand dollars a business a year so now they have a million dollar opportunity some major expansion on which you could bid it would probably be desirable to speak to the ceo but you're afraid of going around the buyer and 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 ruining the relationship in the meantime there's this competitor you have who has no fear of ruining a relationship maybe doing no business goes right to the ceo forms a relationship who's going to get the business in nine out of 10 cases, it's the person who went to the CEO. So that's an example of a sales innovation is, is, um, you know, bypassing the normal channels, uh, when it's called for now, a way to avoid having to do that is start at the top, which is also a social, which is also an innovation, but innovations by themselves, selling innovations by themselves, um, you know they're 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 like they're 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 fallow unless unless you 
uh, marry it to do or die. So here's another distinction, do or die versus best efforts. Do or die means you give it a try. Excuse me, best efforts means you give it a try. The old college try, do or die means you get it done. So this distinction, do or die versus best efforts, can be an innovation, a sales innovation within a company. Most people tend to operate on the best efforts uh, basis. And what we tend to find is if you're competing against entrenched competition, if you're trying to pull some business away from somebody and you do it on a best efforts basis, you should, affect, you should expect to fail 100% of the time. Mm, I think I went through all the questions here, Sim. So I'm gonna end it now and I'm gonna uh, hopefully end meeting. Oh.